Affordable PC gaming. This is an RTX 4060 laptop for £1,199. Is that a good way to start this video? Probably not. Hello everyone and welcome to a video I'm genuinely really excited about because this is the first laptop with an RTX 4060 laptop GPU that I will have tested. This is the Gigabyte G5. In this video we're going to essentially have a look at its performance and see whether the more affordable price point of £1,200 for a gaming laptop gets you pretty cool performance. I'm guessing that it does, but we haven't seen it yet. And as we take this out of the box, I will say an absolutely massive thank you to Scan Computers and NVIDIA for actually sponsoring this video. If you do want to check out pretty much anything Thing PC gaming, whether it's really affordable, accessible, or complete ball to the wall RTX 4090, scan computers have you covered. And actually, surprisingly, the build quality on this is, I guess, a lot better than I was expecting. That's not to say I was expecting it to, well, not be good, but actually this feels really premium for something that costs £1,200. And I will say that this video is not affiliated with Gigabyte in any way, so if there are any problems, we will be telling you about this, make no mistake. It really does look pretty neat, doesn't it? You've got this full-size keyboard and trackpad, so support for, like, Windows 11 gestures, all of those things. Full-size Ethernet as well, very important for a gaming laptop. USB-C, micro SD. Not the most useful thing, but better than nothing. On the left-hand side, you've got two more USB, one 3.0 and one 2. Then you've got a headphone microphone combo jack. And something that I always love to see, it's not always possible because of thermal limitations, but you've actually got ports on the back here. So you've got your HDMI 2.1 out and a display port, mini display port, obviously. So if you're going to connect this to like a third-party monitor, which a lot of you are probably going to do, really useful to have them on the back. Then you've got your power input and then another USB-C. So all round, it's actually a pretty smart-looking laptop. It's relatively lightweight, so you can take this from place to place place as opposed to like a standard desktop replacement that literally just stays at home 99% of the time anyway. But then it's almost thick enough to give you that reassurance that you are going to have some decent thermal performance but obviously we'll be testing this in just a second so if it's loud and unpleasant you're going to know about it. Let's grab my hashtag not sponsored iFixit kit. iFixit if you're watching this reach out. I use your screwdrivers a lot. Grab a laptop flip it over and actually show you what's on the underside. Because otherwise, understandably, I get loads of complaints. And actually, rather nicely, this is using standard Phillips crosshead screws, so you don't even need like a torque screwdriver or something to get inside this. And when I last spoke to Gigabyte about their warranties, obviously if you do damage something inside, that's not covered, but actually taking the back panel off and upgrading it is not going to affect your warranty, which is nice. Despite these two stickers here that sort of prove you've opened it up. You've got your cooling up top for your CPU and your GPU, and then on the left-hand side, you do have an expandable SSD bay if you do want to add another M.2. Though it should be noted that this is Gen 3 speeds only, not Gen 4. This base one that you get included is Gen 4, but because this is running a 12th generation Intel 12500H, you don't actually get the benefits of multiple Gen 4 speeds on multiple SSD slots. I don't think it's a problem because last time I tested it, I didn't see any difference really for performance when it actually comes to real world gaming performance at all. But obviously, if you step up to a more expensive laptop, these are the sort of benefits that you can actually start to expect. I think that is pretty much everything put back together, which means it's time to actually turn this on and get get testing that lovely RTX 4060. Bezels are actually pretty thin on this. They're not the absolute thinnest when it comes to this chin at the bottom, but again, that's pretty normal, really, for a gaming laptop. Overall, I think it looks pretty smart. This is a 1080p display running at 144 hertz. Mr. NVIDIA. Subtle. I don't know what the pin is, though. And I was having a trail of thought, wasn't I? Yes, if you step up to a more expensive laptop, you can now get 1440p gaming laptops kind of as standard. But I think 1080p displays really are probably going to be the sweet spot for most people because on a screen size like this, you're not really going to notice huge amounts of difference, but you are going to notice the reduced frame rate from running at 1440p, or you obviously need a lot more horsepower to be able to drive it. So I think for most people, this is probably about right. Oh, <laughs> right, we're in, he says, as a screw falls out where he hasn't actually put it back in properly. Carl, don't put that in the video. In terms of the specifications of the G5, this one packs an i5-1208 12-core processor with four performance cores, eight efficiency. Then you've got DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz. This is 16, but as I say, you can upgrade this if you want to a little bit later. Now you do also have a PCI Gen 4 SSD, but this one is only 500 gigabytes. And I say only, that's absolutely fine for a boot drive. And to be honest, it's gonna be fine for most new gamers for six, 
months, a year, anything like that really. Depends what you want to play, but you are going to be a little bit limited and not having masses of games installed at the same time. But as you can buy extra SSD storage really easily, and as I've already shown you, it's very easy to upgrade this. I don't see this as a big issue, to be honest. You got support for Wi-Fi 6, integrated graphics, which is great when you are going to be taking this out and about using NVIDIA Optimus technology, so you're not using the dedicated GPU when you don't need to to save power. And then of course, you got the star of the show, the RTX 4060 laptop GPU with eight gigabytes of VRAM. That is going to be perfect for all of the modern games, regardless of whether you've got ray tracing support. We're even going to try out a bit of path tracing, like the super advanced ray tracing in just a second. And then of course, support for DLSS 3.0 with DLSS frame generation. And now this is the point in the... No one saw that, it's fine. And now this is the point in the... And now this is the point in the video where I actually need to get some games installed on this thing and show you its performance. But I have realised I haven't actually shown you the power brick yet, which is a lot smaller than a lot of gaming laptops. This one is rated for 150 watts, with the laptop GPU itself rated for 75. Let's get gaming! Okay then, everything has been installed. We've grabbed our PC-centric mouse mat. Link is located down below. And I think we're ready to play some games. And I think we should begin right in the deep end with some Cyberpunk 2077. And in terms of our graphics, we're going to run this at the Ultra preset, but we're going to turn DLSS off entirely, and we'll sort of work our way up to see the difference that we can achieve. In terms of predictions, well, as I say, I haven't used a 4060 before, so I'm hoping we can get probably about 60 frames a second or so. And it's almost as if I knew the answer. I promise I didn't. We're actually getting pretty much bang on 60 frames a second. There's no V-Sync as we look up to the sky and it skyrockets. So this is the bare minimum frame rate that I think you'd be able to achieve in Cyberpunk. Bear in mind, this is ultra settings and it is still very difficult to run, but there's just not really any need to play this game without using dynamic scaling technologies because they really do work. And if you're worried about image quality, you can obviously have them at the highest quality settings and DLSS quality versus off tends to look pretty similar, to be honest, especially if you're running this at high resolutions. What I will draw your attention to, though, is the thermals, because I have actually turned the fans down on this. I've put a custom curve, and clearly running this in like a quieter mode, as it is in now, will actually impact your thermals, because we're sitting a little bit too high on the CPU for my liking, with around about 80 on the GPU and 95 on the CPU. So I'm going to go into the settings and adjust this. So it means that our system will get slightly louder, but we will get better thermals. Here's your little acoustic test. For a gaming laptop of this caliber, it's pretty much what I'd expect, which is to say headphones, you won't notice it. Speakers, you probably will. If you go for a larger size laptop or a more expensive one that has better cooling, then yes, it will be quieter. But the reality is if you do buy a gaming laptop, you have to expect it to make some noise as there's a lot of heat to be moved around in a relatively small chassis. But anyway, back to our gaming test. Right now, have a closer look at our frame rate and our latency, about 60 FPS and about 42 on the latency. We will go into the settings menu and we will find DLSS and we will turn this on to the quality setting. Hit apply and what difference will that make to our frame rate? Actually quite a big difference. We're now getting about 75 to 80 frames a second and our latency has gone down to sub 40. So you can definitely notice a difference, especially in a game like this where it's an FPS. It does help to have a higher frame rate so you can move around and actually sort of aim accurately. But I don't know what you're thinking. This test isn't particularly difficult, right? We need some ray tracing. So let's go back into the settings and we will now change the preset to ray tracing medium. Make sure DLSS is still on quality. Hit apply and then our frame rate will now drop to around about 45 to 50 frames a second or so. And obviously the latency is increased to about 55 milliseconds. But of course, this is a 40 series laptop, which means we have an extra bell and whistle at our disposal. Once more, we'll go into the settings menu and we'll turn on DLSS frame generation. And immediately you can notice a huge difference to the frame rate. We're currently getting around about 75 frames a second on a laptop running pretty much the latest and greatest. That is pretty cool, isn't it? And when you think at the start of this video, we were running this at 60 frames a second without any ray tracing whatsoever, but by enabling DLSS 3.0, you can actually get an even higher frame rate with ray tracing enabled. I mean, to be fair, our latency has increased a little bit. We're currently getting around about 80 milliseconds or so. But what if we really want to take this a step further and enable the latest path tracing update. Can this laptop actually run it? Let's do ourselves a little static test. At the moment, we're getting about 73 frames a second. We will turn super resolution down to balanced and then all the way at the bottom, path tracing technology preview. Let's turn this on. Is this gonna be able to run it? I mean, yes, yes it can, but I think this is pretty much a uh, have a look around rather than uh, keep playing this game. Because I mean, if you look at the visuals now, that is ridiculous. 
just how good that looks. I mean, look at the dynamic lighting. All of this is fully path traced. So what you see is pretty much exactly what you'd get in real life. I mean, look at the way the light scatters from those headlights on the ground. It's slightly damp, so you get a little bit of reflectivity, but nowhere near as much as like a straight puddle. It really is something to behold. It's now time to move on to our next title, some Portal RTX. And this, of course, is a very old game that has actually been, I guess, brought up to date with RTX Remix. So this is actually running with full path tracing. So you're essentially getting ridiculously realistic reflections. I mean, for context, just look at the way the light kind of like reflects, refracts off of this window. You've got this like weird, what's that called? Like wavy, wavy effect to the glass and the light actually well, reflects in the way that it should do in real life. And it's kind of weird because it's not really something I'm used to seeing in games before because it's not usually done dynamically. It's sort of like pre-baked and it can look absolutely fine. But as soon as you, I guess, look where the developers don't want you to look, it all kind of breaks apart. Whereas this, you can pretty much look anywhere and everywhere and everything is ridiculously accurate. And it's just really impressive. I'd also like to take this opportunity to draw your attention to the frame rate. Bear in mind this is running full path tracing. We're actually getting about 135 to 144 frames a second at the moment. From a portable gaming laptop that costs 1200 quid. Next up is a title I've literally played to death many, many times. The cycle goes on. Because it's Returnal. Once again, let's have a quick look at our settings. We're running this at 1080p and we use the Epic preset. DLSS balanced, and I want all of the ray tracing enabled. I'll set this to medium. And actually, that is really not bad. See, Return always a game that I think runs beautifully on PCs. It's clearly been pretty well optimized. Maybe it's because it was originally on PlayStation. But as you can see, we're currently getting about 90 frames a second or so. And I do realize that the save I have here is actually uh, not mine because this is not my Steam account. So if I die, I've literally ruined someone else's game. So I apologize. Yeah, not bad though. Not bad at all. Around about 85 frames a second. And we're actually slightly limited in terms of our CPU. That is actually what's holding back our frame rate ever so slightly. I guess this is a risk with this CPU. It's definitely not the absolute most powerful, but to be honest, it's gonna depend on the game that you wanna play. And obviously if you spend more, you've spent more money. Whereas a lot of games are gonna be more GPU dependent. So you probably wanna prioritize that over your processor. Well, actually we could set this to be quality and then turn our ray tracing all the way up to Epic. Yeah, actually our frame rate is essentially staying pretty much the same. It's dropped down a little bit to around about 66 or so, but I would argue this is still a fantastic way to play Returnal. I would actually choose to play this with a controller personally. Don't have a go at me. I just think it's a heavy navigation game and it makes it a bit easier. But mouse and keyboard or controller, pretty cool. But let us take this opportunity to now press on to the multiplayer game I know you want to see, some Call of Duty Warzone 2, this time at competitive settings. I've got the memo. Of course, once again, we're running this at 1080p, 144 hertz. And if we go over to the quality tab, I've tried to, I guess, make the best competitive settings I can without losing too much quality. So we're using DLSS set to the quality preset. And then we've got textures high, but then all of the extra effects and things low. One of the main settings you always want to make sure that you have on is this NVIDIA reflex, as this actually helps to lower the latency in your game. So when you move your mouse, essentially it moves quicker in the game and your reaction times can actually be a little bit reduced. So here we go, getting ready to jump out of the plane. What is our frame rate gonna be? Now it is definitely worth remembering Remembering that this is a very CPU bound game. So when we look at the top right hand corner of your screen, you can actually see that we're not really utilizing anywhere near as much of the GPU as I would like, which means again, you can sort of turn some of the quality settings up to sort of have your cake and eat it. We're currently getting about 75, 76 frames a second or so which is gonna give you a smooth experience, but it isn't gonna max out that 144 Hz 1080p display. Let's see what happens then if we do turn our graphics settings up. We we'll go to extreme and we'll leave DLSS at quality, hit apply, and is it gonna to make too much difference? Well, you can definitely tell that the quality has improved. And as you can see, our utilization on the GPU has increased, but actually our frame rate hasn't really changed. We're still getting anywhere really between about 70 and 100 FPS. So that's pretty cool, actually. It seems to me as if the game is almost bedded in a little bit. Maybe as the player count reduces, the CPU load also goes down a little bit because our latency is now about 20 milliseconds, which isn't too bad. But it is worth considering if you are playing something like Warzone or anything really that is very CPU bound, then spending a little bit money or buying a laptop that has slightly more CPU performance it is going to result in a slightly higher frame rate. But let's move on to something that's a little bit easier on the CPU. This is some Apex Legends. This is obviously a multiplayer title, one I think all of us know very well by now. And as you can see, we're currently getting, I guess, just under the frame rate cap. It's going to go slightly over or under depending on when and where you are in the game. But as you can see, 
around about 140 frames a second. And the CPU doesn't really seem to be bothering us too much. We're currently getting about 97% on the GPU utilization. So if you do want a game that will fully utilize this display, Apex Legends isn't a bad choice. So there we are then, the Gigabyte G5. Overall, you're getting a lot of laptop for your money. Bear in mind you can get an RTX 4060 in a laptop that costs 1,200 pounds. I think that is not too shabby. Obviously, there are a couple of limitations that you need to be aware of. Whilst the overall build quality is very good, the trackpad, keyboard, I'm very happy with all of those, there are gonna be certain titles where you are gonna be slightly bottlenecked by that CPU. And I don't think there's a version that comes with a slightly higher specs one, but as you can see, we're already sort of at the limits of thermals on that CPU anyway. So long story short, you are gonna to have to spend more money if you want the 4060 to be sort of completely unrestricted, shall we say, in every single game. But I don't think that's necessarily a huge issue for what a lot of people are gonna be using this for, because yes, if you play Warzone, there are laptops that will give you a higher frame rate, but things like Apex Legends, where you're gonna be getting 144 frames a second, well, if you spent more money on a better CPU, it wouldn't make any difference anyway. So it's always worth considering what games you're going to be playing. As an all-round package, I have to say, I am genuinely pretty impressed. But the question very much goes out to you guys on this. What do you make of the Gigabyte G5? Is this the sort of thing you've been after? Are there other laptops that take your fancy? Or are you happy with what you got now? Maybe your team desktop? Let me know down in the comment section below. Absolutely smash this like button if you've enjoyed it. Get yourself subscribed. And if you want to ask any questions about this, let me know, as I say, down in the comment section below. And if you do want to check out current pricing on this or anything else that's in my setup, you can find that linked down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.